In this video, we're going to start hacking the Arcade 1UP PCB board. Um, it's just a Linux board, and it this one is the one of the first ones they came out with the Atari, like Tempest, and Asteroids and all that. I just want to show you basically how to um, start probing around some type of unknown board. And in this case, we're going to get access via the uh, serial port that's on there, and we're going to add up add some additional space to the USB. Now, I'm not going to encourage you to put any ROMs on here that you don't own, as that would be illegal. But um, just messing around with the board, there's nothing illegal about this. It's just a uh, generic, basically um, common SOC system on a chip that is widely supported under Linux. So um, i show you how to mess around with it. It should be fun. I actually really like the Arcade 1UP little devices. Um, I'm really surprised they did a great job. I did not think these things were going to be a hit, especially after the first ones came out, because for years, 20, 15, 20 years, people were putting together main machines, these big, huge main machines, and they were no one bought them. No, you know, I mean, people would build their own, but the companies that try to make them would always fail. But they really hit the, the niche here. I think one of the problems with the people who built big main machines is one, they're too big. And two, they're overwhelming. You know, you get so many games on there. And three, they're generically boring. The arcade one-ups are I really like because they only put a few games on there, which I which seems contrary to logic. You'd think that would be worse. But I find I, I like it more when I just have a game or two that I you know I like to play. I turn it on. It feels more realistic than going through a list of a thousand games or four thousand or five thousand games. I just go to the machine I want, and I also really think um, the artwork. This is where they initially kind of dropped the ball. At the beginning, they were just generic cabinets like everyone else. And, you know, you could see that when they came out, people, no one was buying them. They were selling these things for 50 bucks. In fact, I think this game, Walmart was selling for 75 bucks. This is the one that this came from. And people were buying it just for the monitors, basically. And, but um, when they started adding the custom artwork and making it look really pretty, that really changed the dynamic. And I love, I like them because I love artwork and I like these little small things, but they have big monitors. Um, the LCDs are, you know, they're, they're, they're big compared to, you know, a CRT, which would be huge for tiny and heavy and huge for like that kind of cabinet. Um, I do like CRTs better, but anyway, um, so props to them. Congratulations to them. They've, I think they've, they found a niche that I didn't think they were going to be successful for, but they really uh, hit it home with these things. I have like three or four of them myself, and I want that burger time. Today, I'm going to uh, start trying to get into this Arcade 1UP system board. Um, this board runs Linux, and I got this for like 25 bucks off eBay with the control panel. And I just want to see if I could add, I just, just for fun, to add a game to it. So it runs Linux, so that should be, um, I won't say that will be easy, but that, you know, that should be doable. It has a, a chip that is well supported. Um, with Linux and the, the CPU chip, the SOC chip. I think it's a all winner or something, A13. So this also is going to show you how to kind of probe around boards and uh, figure out what things are. So uh, there was another guy who was pretty well known for messing with these boards and he I talked to him a couple years ago and then he kind of dropped off the face of the earth. I was trying to do something and uh, I don't know what happened. I was busy. He, maybe he was busy too. But I looked um, up recently. I haven't seen all this stuff is closed. So his accounts are closed. So um, his YouTube channel and all that. So I don't know what happened to him. So I'm not going to mention his name. But he mentioned, he told me that these right here, and I, I put pins on them. I, I soldered in terminal strips to them. They're normally not there. They're just holes. Are the um, uh, UART ports, the serial ports. And... He had mentioned, and he told me what the pinout was, I think. And he also mentioned that this was the USB. And he did not tell me what pins were which. But um, I didn't even know, think I was going to use that. But 
I had logged into this thing before and I noticed it does it has not much storage on it so I'm gonna need to use the USB to add um, some storage and to move things back and forth because this has no networking so I want to show you um, because we know th this is serial we can connect to it and um, this pin right here is ground and we can verify that by if you don't know where something is but you have an idea um, find something that you know is ground put your ohmmeter on and let me back this up here a little bit so I got my ohmmeter here and this should be ground in here the power and I just touch that and we have ground so I know that is ground and it's always good to know where ground and voltage is and I'm gonna try to figure out um, USB has ground plus five and then two signal channels that are the opposite of each other, uh, D plus and D minus for data. And I'm just going to probe each of these ports until I find out that it's it right there. This is ground also. So um, we have ground here and ground here. Now, I know that's ground. And that is, I think, plus five. But we're going to find out. Um, we're going to need to know all these pins, and then I, uh, we're going to have to figure out what these are so I can connect a USB device to it. So what I am going to do here is I'm going to plug it in. and turn it on. Now, um, now we're gonna probe out, and I'm gonna have to pull this back a little bit. You can hear it start up there. I'm gonna probe out these other pins and uh, see which one is power, or verify that the one I think is power is power. And you can do this. Um, when, you're, when you're tracking continuity, you wanna do that with the power off, um, like I did here with the ground. And now we're going to um, see since we do know this is ground, I'm going to use my oscilloscope ground on this guy right here, which I know is ground. And now let's probe out these guys. So here we go. We have ground here, and then we have this one, which I think is plus five, and sure enough, that's plus five. Okay, so we know we have ground here, plus five here. These two have to be data. So I'm gonna actually just solder on the um, terminals, and then I'm going to um, just put, put a USB connector onto it um, but I also want to show you and I'll figure that out later we have to still figure out which one is which which data is which but I want to also show you how I'm going to connect to it through the serial port you get a shell so this is a USB to serial converter that I bought on Amazon and um, for what 11 bucks and I'm going to go ahead I'm going to turn this back off remove this and with serial ports, you have to choose the right voltage. I believe this is 3.3. I usually just go with 3.3 and um, see if that works, um, if I don't know the specs. Um, ground was green. And then we had black. And th it doesn't matter what colors are which, but I had um, this one middle is black. was ah, Black. And if I remember correctly, that was, what was that? Was that send or receive? That is receive and blue was send, I guess. So I got that in there. I've already set um, up Putty, which is a program that lets you, lets you connect to, um, lets you connect to a uh, serial port. And then I have my serial port hanging out. You expect extension cord, plug the converter in, plug that in, and set the settings. Now, um, you have to install the driver, the FTDI um, serial to USB driver, which I already did. And you get that from yeah, ftdichip.com. And it's a, it's a VCP, virtual VCP, virtual COM port. Okay. So then you have to set your settings. So it's uh, COM, you have to figure out what your COM port is. You just go into Device Manager and see which one it shows up as. 
speed 115200. You have to know this, and most of the modern hardware is going to use this. Um, if you're using these two, only three connectors, you're going to have data bits, you're probably going to 8, 1, and then no parity and no flow control. And, oh, we got to turn it on. And there you see, we have it, um, we have it, um, booting Linux. And I'm going to move this a little bit here. You can actually see it's doing some, some, uh, you see some, um, stuff to the console port. So we'll log in. And there we have a shell. And you can see we don't have much space. Uh, it's got about 100 megabytes and only 5 megabytes available. But you can look around the system. Um, you can see the it's using MAME, right? See that there? And let's look at the MAME.ini. ROMs are well, ROMs, okay. And there it's got the game. So this is the arcade one up. Uh, it's like the, the first one they did two years in 2018 or something, or maybe it was even 2017 with the asteroids and all that. Um, so now I'm going to see if I can actually load another ROM on there and, and get it to work. Um, if I remember correctly, I looked at this a couple years ago um, before I stopped and got did other things and got sidetracked. It has Super Street Fighter 2 CE. That, what? That's interesting. Did I put that on there? I don't think I did. Maybe I did. So it's got Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition on there. I don't know. I, maybe I put that on there. I don't know. I don't remember putting that on there. Um, interesting. Um, but anyway, um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, I looked at it before, and it looked like it, it was actually compiled to only support certain games. Um, the interesting thing is, I don't... This is a very old version of MAME. Um, let's see which version of MAME it was. It's like... One one three nine U one. Um, so main version point one three nine. I thought it was older than that. Um, I am interested to see how it. I built main a while ago for ARM, and it was huge. It was way more than um, this this um, this space. So I um, I have to see what they did in there, how to how they got it so small. But anyway, um, eh, there you go. There's just a quick little way to show you how you connect. Um, in the next video, I'm going to try to hook up. I'm going to go ahead and install some terminals, just like I did um, for the this for the USB, and, and hook it up and see if I can get some more storage on there and start messing with that way. I can also get data on and off of it. I couldn't put that on there because I had no way of moving the data, the Street Fighter on there because I have I don't have a COM port and it has no network. So that's interesting that uh, it's it was. Street Fighter was already on there. I huh. wonder if I uh, fired a MAME up and told it to play Street Fighter if it would play. Let's try it. I have no monitor connected, but um, wow, it's playing. Again, I don't have hooked up the monitor, any monitors, so you can't really see it. Um, I have to get a monitor hooked up into this somehow just so I can um, debug things. Oh, Pete, there you go, you can hear it. Sheathing off this USB uh, extension cord, and I'm gonna solder the, on some jumper pins to this. So these Arduino GPIO cables, whatever you want to call them, um, jumper cables, and uh, we'll plug it in and see. I probed in with my oscilloscope and watched the signals as I tried to poke around and pretend I was a USB device by um, using a resistor and um, I came up with the pinouts that it looks like is correct that this was that's ground we knew that that's D minus D plus is orange and red is uh, power obviously because we checked that and I hooked it up and it seems to be good let's look at it I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in but I'm going to um, 
I'm going to put this screen up here. And go ahead and plug it in. Oops. There it goes. It shows up as Dev UDA, UBA, I'm sorry. So we'll um, MKDER, MNT USB, mount Dev UBA1, MNT USB, LS minus L, MNT USB, and there's some files on there. Um, I had, that was actually, this is one of my main. A really old, like a 20 year old MAME uh, background, Mr. Salty, um, for the front end from, I think it was called Mala. Really liked Mala. Um, not supported anymore. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so now we have a USB device on there. And what I'll probably do is hook this up to actually a USB hub so I can do more stuff. I'm going to tape everything together, make sure it doesn't fall apart, and, uh, and we'll go from there.